hey, welcome back. Before we get to our final story, let's just recap, because in the prior two modules, I've shown you two new pathways to adoption. You have the Vision Coalition from Pfizer, and you have the Sponsored Selling from Kohl's. And both of those stories are predicated on an individual taking exceptional steps in a unique way to get buy-in for their own idea. But for our final story, what I'll do is show you something that's been systematically proven to be effective in selling in ideas across an organization over and over and over. For this, we go to Lowe's, and I want you to meet two people. This is Gretchen Lopez, and this is Josh Shabtai. They work in Lowe's Innovation Labs, and Gretchen is actually the senior producer of Narrative there. They've done really well. Uh, the Lowe's Innovation Labs has become a leader in the industry, and Lowe's overall has been recognized for doing really innovative things in the retail space. But even they had trouble getting buy-in for their idea. And they had a really cool idea. They thought, what if we put exoskeleton suits on Lowe's associates as braces for lifting? If you don't know what an exoskeleton suit is, think of Terminator. <laughs> think of military. It's basically a carbon fiber body brace that stores energy and allows you to lift things with a lot less strain on your body. It's kind of like having a superpower. Now they went through the process, probably a lot of us have too. They had a great idea, people loved it, they brought it to management and did very well in the presentation, but then they got hit with this. Why? Why do we need to put exoskeleton suits on our associates? And aren't we doing well already? And how much would it cost to do this? And how long would it take to do this? And why again do we need to do this? And they realized that pragmatic objections drag momentum. If people can sit around and just poke holes in your ideas, they'll never get off the ground. See, the old way of selling in an idea, or a product for that matter, would be adding a need plus solution. If you think of the old door-to-door -door salespeople, they come into your home with a new vacuum. They talk to you about need ABC and benefit ABC. They match those together, boom, you have a brand new vacuum cleaner, Mrs. Smith. But that's not the way you can do it anymore. See, I'd say today, you need to multiply that by narrative. And ask yourself, what is the narrative that you're providing? And maybe even more important, what is the right vehicle to deliver it? See, arguments convince one of their truth, but stories convince one of their life likeness. Let's take that back for a minute. Arguments convince one of their truth, but when you have a new idea, your mission is not to convince people that it is the absolute truth. Your mission is to help bring that idea to life in their minds, to help those people imagine a world where your idea is possible. So with that in mind, they went back to the drawing board. They reframed that original question and thought about using narrative to tell their story, to bring their idea to life. They thought, what if our employees had superhuman strength? What if our employees helped with disaster relief efforts? What if our employees were superheroes? See, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's getting fun, right? So they took steps to do something they had never done before. They hired writers and illustrators, and they built a comic book. Let's Rebuild It told the story of a natural disaster and the aftermath. Lowe's associates, equipped with exoskeleton suits, canvassing the city, helping rebuild it, pulling rubble off of people, saving lives, bringing families back together, and ultimately being the superheroes that they know they are. See, when you look at the stats, they say that stories are actually 22 times more memorable than facts. See, our brains act like stories are real. So as that leadership team was reading Let's Rebuild It, they themselves transported themselves into a reality where that was real. And that's powerful for bringing them closer to imagining a world where exoskeleton suits would be a reality and be helpful. The other thing is stories create and release tension. So as those leaders were reading the story, they were physically having a reaction to the ebbs and flows of that story arc, slowly becoming more involved and committed to the actual idea. And lastly, epiphanies are shared experiences. So there were characters in this story that had epiphanies about how helpful the Lowe's associates were, and as they had them, the readers shared those same epiphanies. So you're using this vehicle to do the work of selling in your idea for you. So Let's Rebuild It became the comic book that led the way, 
and established a pattern of them using this kind of vehicle to get adoption for their ideas. They not only used it to communicate with the executives that they needed approval from, but also to communicate the vision to the store employees on the floor. So the thing I want you to think about here is how can you reframe your great idea through narrative? Let's take a step back. Let's stop being so direct in just presenting the idea and assuming that because it is great, it will get adopted. Next time that you have an idea, I challenge you to brainstorm three different ways that you could actually deliver it. Maybe it's a video. Maybe it's a comic book. But brainstorm three ways that you can actually present it. Hey, you made it to the end. Thanks a lot for watching. Let's just recap what we learned so far. So first, to find new ideas, you're going to want to beg, borrow, and steal. Next, you want to seek out creative allies for your ideas. Really dig deep to practice humility and concede credit. And ask yourself, what is the narrative that you're actually providing around your great idea? In conclusion, I think a relevant point is to look at a framework from Trend Hunter's New York Times bestseller, Better and Faster, which talks about the traps of the farmer. See, we as humans for thousands of years have been farmers. And with that, we've been hardwired to fall into those traps you see there. Being complacent, being repetitive, being protective. And so all of these things have helped us domesticate and grow our society, but they also hold us back from innovation. These are natural though. So as you bring new ideas forward, what's important is to recognize that all of these traps are playing out in front of you. All of the people that you're looking for adoption and buy-in from will be activating these traps naturally. And so it's okay if they resist your new idea. That's natural. But now you have tactics to get beyond that. So just to recap one more time, if you're looking for new ideas, I suggest that you beg, borrow, and steal. If you're looking to sell in those ideas, use the Vision Coalition, the sponsored sell-in, or conceptual comics. But what I want to leave you with is the key message, a great idea is not enough. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you want more information, just click the links below.